It's a very famous story about the Or HaChaim HaKadosh, Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar, who was one of the Gedolei Adol, lived in Morocco, and he was a person that loved the Torah in such a way and learned the Torah in such a way that it was beyond extraordinary. A lot of a, uh, huge, huge Chidushim, new insights on the Torah, on different parts of it. It's just unbelievable stuff. Anyone that has the fortune to read some of his commentary on the Torah or other things, Yomash Ashrechim. You have Mamash, it's it's unbel- unbelievable stuff. It's not easy, but nonetheless, it's beautiful. Beautiful things. Beautiful Chidushim about everything. This Orachayim, he worked for some Arab jeweler. But he had an unusual deal. What's the deal? Every day I'm going to work exactly how much money I need to earn. I need to earn 10 shekels so I could spend a few shekels to buy food for my family, a few shekels to pay for the house. That's it. Finished. As soon as I earn the amount of shekels that I need for the day, I stop working and go learn to learn. Now for a while, this worked out. The Arab boss didn't really have much of a choice because Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar, the, uh, the Ola Chaim, was extraordinarily talented. He made very, very nice jewelry. So he didn't have much of a choice. At the same token, he didn't have much of a demand for more. Until one day, the Sultan, the Sultan comes and there's a wedding in his house and he comes to this Arab jeweler and he says, listen, I see that you make the most beautiful jewelry. I want you to make a special piece of jewelry to ev- for every member of my family. So, he took the contract and he had to meet a deadline. And because Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar had this special deal, he said to him, no, I need you to work more. Oh, Chaim said, no, 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 I don't work more. I work exactly like every other day. The fact that you sign a contract and you have a deal, that's your problem. I'm gonna work the same thing I work. I need to earn five shekels today. That's what I'm going to work. I need to earn 10. That's what I'm going to work. Yeah, but I have the, the king. He told me, he said, I work for the bigger king. I work for the king of kings. As you would have it, the time came. The Sultan is expecting, the king of Morocco is expecting the, uh, the delivery of this jewelry and doesn't have it. They bring the Arab in. He said, I'm going to kill you. You embarrass my whole family. He says, no, your highness, it's not my fault. It's not your fault. What do you mean it's not your fault? Whose fault is it if it's not your fault? You're the jeweler. He says, no, it's this Jew's fault. Jew? What Jew? This Jew that works for me doesn't want to work for your highness. What? Bring him in here. It's... They confirmed that's the case. So yeah, we're going to feed you to my lions. This king had a cage of lions. Anytime somebody didn't do exactly what he said, that was, he made them lunch for his lions. So they made sure to starve the lions for a few days. And then they tell Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar, you're going to become lunch for the lions. Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar did not get nervous, did not even think for a second. He says, can I bring my tefillin with me and also my book? What? Those boxes on your head? Yeah. Can I bring those? Yeah, sure. They'll eat that too. They'll probably like it. Maybe they'll clean their teeth with it. And the book, can I bring the book? For what? What, the lions, you're gonna teach the lions how to read? No, I wanna read. You think you're gonna read? <laughs> they start laughing at him. Look at this Jew, he thinks he's gonna read his books with the lions. He doesn't realize the lions are gonna eat him and the book. Go ahead, bring, bring. go ahead, Rabbi. Go, go, bring the book. And he takes, puts on his tefillin, and he takes his book, and they put him into the lion cage. They were so scared of the lions. They did they themselves would not enter the cage. Expecting to see the lions jump on him and eat him up and tear him up to pieces. Everyone is shocked. As soon as Bihaim bin Atal sits down on the ground, opens his sefer, and starts learning Torah. All of the lions that have been starved for several days. Come and sit right next to Rabbi Chaim Ben Atal. Now, initially, they don't know what to tell the king. They say, oh, maybe somebody messed up and really fed them already this morning. Did you do it? Did you do it? Nobody knows. Okay, you know what? Let's not tell the king. Let them, like, not eat anything for a little while. They'll probably eat them later today. The next day they come. 
Rabbi Chaim ben Atar is still learning Torah, hasn't eaten, hasn't drunk anything. The lions haven't eaten, they haven't drunk, everybody's fasting. And they're all still sitting, and once in a while, they lick his feet. They lick his feet. They're playful with him. Next day, next day, three days, three days, these lions are there sitting at Rabbi Chaim ben Atar's feet and waiting. Rabbi Chaim ben Atar, without drinking, without eating, simply learning Torah non-stop. After three days, the people are saying, okay, this must be a very holy person, that the creation is scared of him. These lions are scared of him. They will not eat him. He ran to the king and he told him, Your Highness, you have to see this. The king comes and he sees Rabbi Chaim ben Atar sitting and learning Torah with his tefillin on, reading a book. And the lions scared to death of this rabbi. Immediately this king apologizes to him says, please, please, would you please come out with us? We're really sorry. Kiss falls on his on his floor, kisses his feet. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were such a holy person. Mamash like the story of Daniel in the, in the uh, Tanakh. And this is not 3,000 years ago. It's a couple hundred years ago, 300 years ago. A person that had a munai in HaKadosh Baruch Hu to such an extent, they literally would not work a minute, a minute more than was needed because it would hurt their Torah. They did not work because they wanted to go play video games and smoke marijuana. They did not work because they wanted to go hang out with the boys and girls. They did not work because they wanted to sleep a little extra before they die and sleep permanently. No, he didn't work because it would interfere with his Torah schedule. And it's better not to eat, not to drink, than to interfere my Torah schedule, Rabbi Chaim Benatah says.